Hey everyone, just Dave here dropping in at the top of the episode to say that you're about to hear a very special edition of Do Go On. We've done a crossover episode with Mid-Flight Brawl, our great friends Luke Higgy and Nick Cody. So it's a, a normal report coming up just with a little bit of a, a spin on it. But we've also got some uh, live shows coming up. This Sunday, April 17 and April 24, we're doing two live podcasts at the European Beer Cafe. We'd love to see you there. Also, we've been moved to a bigger venue for our quiz show, the final one of the run, Monday, April 18th, and we have some very, very big surprise guests booked in. So we'd love to see you there. You can find the links to the tickets in the show notes, as well as some details about Matt Stewart's comedy shows that he's doing with Alistair Trumley Birchall at the Melbourne Comedy Festival. That show is, of course, Honk Honk, Hubba Hubba, Ringer, Ding Ding. Oh, I'm so glad you said it. And I'm also coming to Canberra, Sydney, and Brisbane. Uh, check out matsuitcomedy.com for details. I'm here too. <laughs> okay, now on with the special episode. Hello and welcome to the Do Go On Mid-Flight Brawl. God, this is a mouthful. <laughs> Crossover Spectacular. Ooh, spectacular. <laughs> yeah. I like that. Why not? <laughs> Jeez, I'm so happy you got to name it. <laughs> what would you have gone yeah, for? Yeah, Mid-Flight Brawl plus guests. <laughs> <laughs> they never mentioned names. <laughs> Yeah, no, I think we've I think we've done all right there. Have a, have a yeah. name check. <laughs> it's spectacular. It's great. My name's Dave. For people who don't know me, I'm here with Jess. We do a podcast called Do Go On with our esteemed colleague Matt Stewart. Yep. But Acast have said only one ranger on a show at a time, <laughs> yeah. so he's on the bench until I tucker myself out and we'll get him in. <laughs> how, long, how long will that be? Oh, I don't know. At Brecky Radio, I could go for seven, eight minutes. Okay. And then if you play a song, I'm all right for a bit longer. <laughs> Repeat. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got to say mashups for me. It's, I'm, you, I'm in are two you going to say your name? I'm Nick Cody. And I'm Luke Heggie. <laughs> um, and we're from Midflight Brawl for the people, most people who are listening to this who don't know who the fuck we are. But um, <laughs> I'm in two minds is with mashups. If, like, in terms of music, if I like a song, I'll just listen to it and then I'll listen to another song and enjoy them both. You know, I'm widely known for my open mind. So <laughs> Man, I'm on, this works. As I said, commercial radio, I think every second song, you go, fuck yeah, Fleetwood Matt, hold on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what's this bloke done to it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's that's yeah. a motto of commercial music, isn't it? F- fuck yeah, Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah. My favourite at the minute is Toxic. There's a song called Toxic Pony, which is a genuine Britney Spears mashup. Yeah, no, I oh, could have right. guessed that one, I reckon, yeah. <laughs> if I had to have a stab. Is it genuine? Wasn't genuine, it genuine? Genuine. Genuine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Anyway. I don't know. You're the 40 odd year old from Queensland. If anyone was going to know R&B <laughs> yeah. from the oh, yeah. 90s, early 2000s. I know a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's not rum and bourbon, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, thanks, guys, for having us on your podcast. Hey, thanks the for having us on, on your, your podcast. podcast. We're putting it out on yeah. uh, on both feeds to capture the beautiful listeners of, of both podcasts. <laughs> yeah. So for people who don't know Mid-Flight Brawl, tell us what it is. Well, uh, it's a podcast each week where we cover a different uh, scrap on a plane pretty much. <laughs> There's a lot of people fighting on planes, um, on the ground, in the air, uh, sometimes in the airport. We just yeah. did a Spirit Airlines episode recently and sometimes you don't even get to the plane. Before you think, fuck this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm belting everyone. <laughs> and people always ask it. They just think it's like, well, you're doing a thing where you cover plane fights or plane incidents. They don't necessarily have to be fights. Mm. People, yeah. what are they normally doing? What's oh, their there's excuse? A, there's a lot of yelling. There's there's breakdowns. Yep. There's um, feigned illnesses. There's, you know. Rarely they're trying to fault, get free though. stuff. Yeah. Nothing, nothing is ever anyone's fault. No, it's no, a no. major overriding <laughs> yeah. theme. It's generally nothing is anyone's fault. I tried this sleeping tablet for the first time, <laughs> yeah. and I had you know eighty six beers plus. I'm anxious, yep. and the lawyer also said to tell you <laughs> that I have depression. <laughs> it's just whatever you need, yeah. except to say I fucked up on a plane. Yeah. Yeah. We've done a hundred odd episodes. Never has someone just oh, put their hand up. Grant Hackett put his hand up. Oh yeah, no, pretty much no one else has. <laughs> Like they all, it you know, it wasn't me. Hacker put his hand up on the plane and reached forward to the seat in front and nipple crippled a bloke. So <laughs> he put his hand up before he had to put his hand up. <laughs> the reaching across is very funny as well. Allegedly. Yeah, yeah allegedly. allegedly. There you go. We say that a lot. Safe. There was, there was one episode I've been listening to a lot of your show lately, one that really stood out in my feed. I think it was called Homemade Parachute. 
Oh, <laughs> man, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I'm That's listening cool. to that one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a tent from, from Kathmandu or something. This bloke <laughs> put together with a curtain sash off the plane and tried to... Yeah, hijack it, a fill up Fili- everyone, and jump Fili- out. Oh my god! Yeah, Filipino MacGyver <laughs> slash DB Cooper. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah, just, I don't, don't want to spoil it for Jess, but imagine how it ends. Yeah, <laughs> I'm guess right. not well. Yeah. Well, yeah, I don't want to spoil it for anyone, but pre- well, gonna it's just like a knuckle and a knee hanging out of the mud. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <It's> a- yeah. <laughs> I don't want to give much away, but they didn't find DB Cooper, <laughs> and that's quite the opposite of what happened with our bloke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they definitely found him. Yeah, but that's good. I like a resolution, you know. Oh, DB yeah. Cooper, yeah, you're yeah, like, what? It gives you closure. Exactly. Yeah, I'm like, him. where is he? What's happened? <laughs> this guy, you, no question. Did you just have a Warnie episode? Yeah. yeah. Come out. Was that recorded before? Because we did a, we did a, we've got a spin-off podcast for our Patreon subscribers called Land Larrikins, and we did a cricket Special mm. all time grub 11 <laughs> filled every position. <laughs> Who else is in the 11? Oh, no, well, it was um, not many Aussies. There's uh, Terry Jenner, Warney's coach, um, <laughs> funnily enough, <laughs> another spin bowler from the 70s. He's done time. Um, a few subcontinental murderers and stuff. And, <laughs> oh, okay, so um, properly crook. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, like drug traffickers <laughs> yeah, from West right. Indies, English scrubs. Um, only a couple of proper, you know, lovable larrikins like your Warnies and your Ben Stokes. Yeah, uh, just bashing and and you know philandering, what have you. But mm. um, some of them are quite sinister. But you can't leave a murderer. Like there is a s- suggestion <laughs> that murder is quite high on the list yeah. of crimes. So yeah. you can't leave them yeah. out of the 11. You can't. No. You're 12th man and you're the murderer. You're like, come on. <laughs> what are you going to do? Come yeah. on. <laughs> uh, you didn't date Liz early though. So yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. you got to wait for an injury. <laughs> Sorry, mate. That's just how it works. No, we did do that after the fact, luckily. Oh. So it wasn't like we were like, yeah, he's the best. And he's <laughs> yeah. going to live forever. Yeah. Oh, man. Ours was on the day. Oh, wow. Like hours before. Yeah. And the next week we'd done something on a wrestler who died the week Scott after Hall. that. So oh, yeah. Things aren't looking good for you two. <laughs> Being on our podcast. <laughs> no, no. Stay home. <laughs> I am home. <laughs> <laughs> So how's this um, how's this mashup gonna work? Well, so you guys do like mid flight incidents or yeah. airport incidents as it is. We have a more broad uh, sort of topic choice. We we pick something from history and take it in turns to do a report on it. Basically, but we have done some some brawly type stuff. I've been looking back because we've done over three hundred episodes. Mm. We've covered quite a few topics. Yeah, you've covered history. But uh, yeah. you've got to look forward to the future. Yeah, <laughs> we're doing a lot of reports <laughs> on hoverboards. <laughs> Just guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I reckon they're gonna be sick. <laughs> End of report. I have to say I'm I'm disappointed in the in the present because when mm. I was a kid the future was presented as everyone gets their own fucking robot. Yeah. And, you know, where's mine? No robot. Well, that was two thousand was a magical towards yeah. two thousand, then was beyond two thousand. We've just oh, got what's yeah. the next thing? It's just a Roomba. That's yeah. fucked. It doesn't even vacuum properly. Yeah. It yeah. Runs into shit. Well, it's just not kind of a shop spoiler, is it? Yeah. <laughs> Real shit robot. That's yeah. what I never said. We'll have a really bad robot. Yeah. Cheap, cheap labor is is replaced. <laughs> cheap labor replaced yeah. robots. Yeah. So. Got a pair of shoes for four bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, robots. <laughs> Thanks, little robots. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Yeah, grim. How was you sleep at night if you call them robots? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we've done a couple of. Uh, we've done uh, the malice at the palace. Yep. The N- oh, NBA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Ball yeah in I the know 90s. this one. Yep. We had uh, Josh Earl come in and tell us about that. Big NBA fans. That was fun. Do you remember this one, Jess? We did the Toronto Clown Riot. Absolutely not. Oh. Do you know that? No. It was, what, like an affair? It was uh, circus clowns versus a bunch versus. of firefighters. Did I do that report? Yeah. Fuck. Was it organised like a back of the sheds sort of thing or they just I think It just off? sort of erupted. Great. Even better. Wow. you remember more about it, Jess? I was- that's so good that it's your report. You've written a report on Toronto clowns <laughs> punching on with nothing. firefighters. You're like, well, I don't know. I don't remember anything from yeah. this podcast. Like, when we started six years ago, I thought, this is great. This is going to make me a lot smarter. I'm going to get better at yeah. pub trivia. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. We turn, it, turn off the mics, it's all gone. Yeah, it's I'm useless. Sure, yeah. What's your favourite, uh, next question, favourite Toronto clown fight? <laughs> yeah. Don't know. That sounds made up. Anyway, oh. next. <laughs> yeah. That's a no trick. No clue. Is it lunchtime? <laughs> yeah. Are we having lunch? <laughs> That's me. <laughs> so um, but for, for this sort of mashup, um, I thought, uh, Heggy and I have been coming up with a little plan here, and that is maybe that I could talk a little bit about the history of flight. Oh, the, the good old days. Oh, all the romance. It was, uh, you know. 
gentleman working out how to get into the air. Yeah. yeah. Oh, um, that far back. Yeah. The yeah. 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 Well, even further back, my friend. Wow. Oh my god! How we how how we basically got to where you are now, where people are kicking the yeah, shit out of each other. Just just descent into what yeah. it is today. <laughs> That's, good. That's probably what it was. It was probably someone saw the Wright brothers. Go, can't wait till they're bigger. I'm going to fucking bash them. Yeah. <laughs> just biding their when time. When we can all get on. Yeah. Look at these pricks. <laughs> Show it on. <laughs> I'm going to bash them. <laughs> just just that sentence is funny. I'm going to bash them. <laughs> See, and I'm one of those people too. I would not be on the first. A lot of people. No. I don't want the first round of vaccine. I don't want the first plane. I don't want this SpaceX. No. Oh, you want to yeah. go up there with Pete Davidson? No. <laughs> no, thank you. No, I'll wait until it's a regular, yeah. like there's 10 leaving Melbourne airport a day. Yes. Then I'll go yep. into space. Absolutely, yeah. But, yeah. yeah. Not before. The first five. <laughs> no. And also any aircraft where it's like it's, it's going to leave at 4.17 and then they see two clouds and go, fuck, it's off. You <laughs> yeah. go, well, <laughs> if, you, if you're that worried. Yeah. <laughs> if it can't hang around for a bit and then take off, I don't, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't trust it. <laughs> We'll come back every day for five weeks. <laughs> Clear the schedule. So, yeah, well, we'll, we'll get there, but um, <laughs> I have gone way back. Ooh. Yeah, go on. It turns right. out mankind has wanted to fly for ages. Okay. Yeah. Like a long, long time. But it was just jumping. <laughs> it was just known as jumping. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> Seeing what happens. <laughs> and to be honest, it, for a long time it didn't go well. It, even Greek mythology has the legend of Daedalus and his son Icarus. Oh, mm-hmm. I didn't know. I just know Icarus. Yeah. Too yeah. close to the to the sun. What's his dad's name? Uh, Daedalus. Oh, Daedalus. Daedalus. I thought you said Daedalus, which just <laughs> well, sounds like a rough <laughs> nickname to give a bloke that died from <laughs> fucking old Daedalus. Over. <laughs> and you said it way too soon. It's like he's just died and everyone else was like, come on. Well, he hasn't hit the ground yet. Yeah. Oh, Check out Daedalus. Daedalus. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be a big impact. <laughs> he might pull through. No, he won't. Uh, he's no, he won't. Daedalus. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, he wanted to. He created wings by combining leather, uh, feather, leather, probably uh, feathers and wax. Icarus was told by his dad not to fly too close to the sun and not too close to the water below. Okay, so it could either melt or you get clogged up with water. Sure. He went. You don't know what you're talking about, Dad. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll have a crack at yeah. this. He ignored him. He flew too close to the sun. The wax melt and son of Daedalus, Icarus, yeah. <laughs> gone. And similar stories are apparently found in across Europe. India and in China as well. In terms of oh. mythology. Mythology, yeah, mytho- yeah. And sort of how people have wanted to fly oh, there, for ages. There's loose units everywhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not a <laughs> Oh seriously. Yeah. It's not a bogan with a monster energy <laughs> hat thing. You know, they're all over the world. <laughs> no, it, doesn't matter. it is a defect of humanity. <laughs> I want to get up there. But even after it's been perfected, people are still trying to do their makeshift. Like, oh. They can fly a fucking lawnmower or, you know, <laughs> yeah. like God, a guy's car took off because you put rocket fuel in it and drove too What's fast. We did, <laughs> we did once a report on Lawn Chair Larry, do you know? Oh, yeah. Who yeah. stuck a bunch of he helium balloons or lawn, like lawn chair. Space. Like us. Yeah. <laughs> but like in the 70s. And like and Larry. they had to, <laughs> they were like this. They had to let radio pilots to watch out for him and not run into him. Yeah, he was in LA over the airport for yeah, a while. Yeah, and then you get up high enough, and then he goes, oh, "How am I going to come down?" And then some of the balloons start popping. And you go, "Uh oh." Yeah, Icarus, the new Icarus. Yeah. <laughs> should listen to my dad. He said not too high. Um, I I saw a YouTube video the other day of a guy that took one of those big. Almost like fan type thing. Yeah. Really high up. He went proper high. Gloves on. He was like 30,000 feet, 40,000 feet. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Got up there. Or just really, holding really on to really the high. fan. Yeah. I forget the exact. Whoa. You, it was three weeks ago and I've had a lot of beers between then <laughs> yeah. and now. So. <laughs> but how'd it go? Did he stay up there? Or? Yeah. 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 He's and still and then he came down. No, he came down. <laughs> He's still there. He's stuck. But only affordable real estate. <laughs> I live up here now. <laughs> I'm on the clouds. <laughs> wow. At what point can't you breathe? Like surely. Maybe he wasn't that high then. Fuck. I That's crazy. He went proper high though. Like he did have to watch out for aircraft. Yeah. No, you, can, um, you can still breathe. Yeah. I call well and good to watch high. out for aircraft, but what are you going to do? They're coming at you pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. You to turn your fan around. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, here comes one. Stop, just get off the road. Stop flapping. Nah. <laughs> stop flapping. <laughs> well, 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 the earliest example of man-made flight probably can be traced back to China where they flew kites several hundred years BC. Large kites were developed, some big enough to carry people. 
Wow. Wow. That's how big they were. Which I read they use for military movement sometimes, but also for punishment. So yeah. oh. they just hook you up to a cart and say, see you later. <laughs> anyway. what, just kill you. Just yeah. say that. Well, they'd hope you'd get killed, but like yeah. if you landed you know, awesome. in a better country. <laughs> Great. Got away <laughs> from the Korea. people trying to kill me. <laughs> That's pretty great, though, to be strapped to something. It's like you might die as punishment yeah. or you're a hero. Yeah. You've got to take sure. part in flight. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. just life. You might have a beautiful experience <laughs> oh, soaring through the air. <laughs> well, to me, that's like the hot air balloons that take off around Melbourne. Yeah. I just look at every one of those as a 50-50 proposition, even oh. though I assume they're a lot safer, but. But how it many just, do you hear about? It's probably once a month you hear one just coming down in someone's backyard in Greensboro or something. Yeah. They're always coming down there. Coming yeah. down, deflated, coming down. Yeah, like, just crash landing. Really? You kind of Get have bones. to crash land them. Did you know that? Or am I I'm misremembering? I went in one years ago <laughs> and you the, to land them, they don't just sort of land nicely. You sort of have to oh, brace yeah. and, and ideally the basket tips over tips oh. and you're like sideways. What happens to all your champagne and strawberries yeah. when that happens? <laughs> You've got to finish them before you land. <laughs> You're absolutely shit faced yeah. by the end. That helps you with the fall. Stay loose. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just roll out. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go again. Uh, progress was stunted for centuries by mankind's obsession with the flight of birds, thinking that if they can do it like that, why can't we? We don't have wings. That's fair enough. That's so, before TV. Yeah, yeah. You're just looking out the window going, yeah. fuck, that looks sick. Yeah. That looks really good. <laughs> no footy on. <laughs> Look, at that. Look at that budgie having a ripper of a time. <laughs> and for hundreds of years, inventors from around the world focused on ornithopters, which are machines in which flapping wings generate both lift, lift and propulsion that emulated the way birds fly. Mm. Sadly, these often did not end very yeah. well. That was in the curly moustache era, I reckon. <laughs> it's a penny farthing. Yeah, they should have like, stuck to hmm. boxing, polite boxing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Fucking. Notre Dame fighting Irish logo. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, it goes back really far because in 852 AD, Armin Furman, which is a great name, placed feathers all over his body and attached wing-like garments to his arms. Then he just jumped from a tower, hoping oh. for the best. Was that Birdman Rally? <laughs> yeah, that yeah original Birdman Rally. <laughs> Did he jumped off the- Daimaru. <laughs> yeah. Did he get the best? Well, his attempt was unsuccessful. Oh. Uh, his efforts slowed his descent just enough to allow him to survive. So maybe that <laughs> oh. is a success. No, nah, that's is worse. That success? Yeah, it's worse, isn't that's it? That's even worse. <laughs> because he survived but every bone in his body is broken. Yeah. 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 Right? He survived to feel the pain. Yeah. <laughs> his conclusion was he didn't fly far because unlike birds, he didn't have a tail. That was yes. what he thought was oh, right, okay. Yeah. Next time. They're like, mate, there will not be a next time. Yeah, it's got yeah. nothing to do with power to weight ratio or <laughs> yeah. of that. the fact that you're just a man with feathers on. <laughs> I don't think it's the feathers that are doing all the work, you know. It's like just putting glasses on a bird and go, why didn't he pass uni? You go, well, it's, it's more than that. <laughs> it's not just the thing on him. <laughs> Look at this really smart bird. Why doesn't he have a medicine degree? Oh, then some really smart people from all over Europe were absolutely thinking about this too. So Leonardo da Vinci, Galileo Galilei in Italy, Christian Huygens in the Netherlands and Isaac Newton in England all contributed to an understanding of the relationship between resistance or drag and such factors as the surface area of an object, mm. like you're talking about. They're actually yeah. using science <laughs> rather than, I reckon I'm missing a tail. Yeah, yeah it's a tail, I reckon. Christian Hugen sounds like a Maya uh, suit brand. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I would have worn that to my formal. Totally. <laughs> well, what are you wearing? Christian Hugen. <laughs> it would have been buy two shirts, get a free tie or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even Da Vinci was focusing uh, on birds and bats. So we can look at mm. Da Vinci like yeah. an idiot. <laughs> he wasn't thinking about, about jets, the the fuckhead. Yeah, come yeah. on, mate, get a jet. <laughs> it's rocket fuel, you idiot. Yeah. <laughs> English engineer George Cayley is sometimes referred to as the father of aviation along with about five other guys. Oh, yeah. People are vying yeah. for this title. But uh, his claim is in 1799 he identified the four forces which act on heavier than air flying Uh, which are weight, lift, drag, and thrust. He was also the first experimenter to focus on fixed-wing aircraft and designed the first glider reported to have carried human aloft. So he did well. Mm. He's done very well. He's figured out the four big ones there. (laughs) And then he's stop flapping your arms. You look fucking stupid. All right, just fix the wings. This is dumb. (laughs) We're better than birds. (laughs) (laughs) It's embarrassing when you do it. 
Gary, stop flapping your arms. <laughs> you look like an idiot. But a few years before this in 1783, Jess, you'll be interested to hear that the Montgolfier brothers in Versailles in France showed off their invention of a hot air balloon. Montgolfier. That's a fun Mm. That's a fun it name. It also sounds like a polo branded shirt. <laughs> yeah. 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 The horse is backwards. <laughs> yeah. I got that at the Vic Market. Yeah. <laughs> it's a Montpellier. <laughs> uh, the first flight of a hot air balloon had the world's most confused sheep, duck, and rooster on board. <laughs> oh, Great. <shit. laughs> what, a weird, what a weird combo. <laughs> How'd they go? They make it back? They made it back. They were worried that humans couldn't survive that high up in the air, so they went yeah. chucking the farm animals. Yeah. And they Ice survived. Monkeys. Oh, there you okay. go. So yeah. it worked. I thought that's it. they were going to make some weird to duck and the <laughs> flames just fucking cooked them all. They <laughs> dropped back. You go, well, well, it smells well, good. It doesn't work. Great. Yeah. <laughs> Lunch is on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so what was it? A sheep, a duck, and a rooster. A yeah, rooster. Wow. Okay. That's like a puzzle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they all had each other. Uh, for the next century, this was the closest humans or roosters got to fly. <laughs> uh, people tinkered away with theories, experiments, and new designs. With the first wind tunnel built way back in 1871 in England. Again, as in a wind tunnel, like the thing you can do near the airport here, where you you put on the Red Bull <laughs> yeah. suit and pretend In, to indoor parachute. skydiving. Yeah, indoor skydiving. <laughs> yeah. Is that and you get manhandled by the guy trying to show you what to do? Yeah, yeah. He's trying oh, to correct oh, you. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, oh. Awkward for everyone. <laughs> Have you done that? No. No. <laughs> no. Look, I the- asked Cody and then I looked at Heggy. I was thinking maybe Nick's done it, but look, yeah. I didn't no. think you would have. No, not my thing. Have you done it? No. No. Nah. I don't no. think it's my thing. I reckon walk out of there with a broken neck. <laughs> they just old. turn it off. My you worry about power outages that, or yeah. something. Yeah. Yep, nice and high, and this power goes out. <laughs> <laughs> we wanted the, indoor skydiving. We gave it to you. They're really trying to make near Melbourne Airport the place to go. Yeah, they're try, it's like, but it's like the new Docklands. There's urban surf. Yeah, where you can go out. Have you seen urban surf? Mm. Oh yeah, mm. just a proper. Beach almost, yeah. but with massive waves and you can learn how to surf. Yeah, inland the surfing. Yeah. 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 You can do yeah. inland surfing and indoor skydiving. <laughs> you can do anything in Melbourne. <laughs> Come <Yeah>. on down. <laughs> <laughs> Fifth most livable city. <laughs> Yay. Uh, Otto Lilenthal from Germany was dubbed the flying man after he made a series of successful flights with gliders. He made over 2,000 documented flights with gliders, including wow. his final flight, oh. which stalled and he fell 15 metres to his death. Ooh. Oh, right. Hold on, that's not. 15 metres? Oh, oh, I no. guess that's. You could oh. die, die from five. Oh, no, you're fucked. I was just hoping for higher. Yeah, yeah I, I would have thought <laughs> yeah. higher, yeah. Yeah, had a few I think so, Just so he was really high. dead. Yeah, actually, yeah. you're right, because he didn't die straight away. He died oh. the next day. Yeah, so yeah. if you had added the zero, off. Oh, no question. Yeah, yeah, absolutely done. <laughs> Yeah, right. As he's falling, his, he wish, his final thought is, I wish I was higher. Yeah. <laughs> and this is pre-opium, I reckon. Like pre, <laughs> they haven't figured out the heroin compound yet. Yeah. yeah. Right. He's You're just sitting there going, Feeling oh, everything. Just trying to bite onto a belt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> nah, nah. I wish I was higher. Get me some fucking oxies. I'm in a bad way. <laughs> his uh, tombstone has the words, sacrifices must be made inscribed on it. <laughs> Oh. Sacrifices must be made. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god! Wow, different which is, time. Which is I mean, just you know, grim. <laughs> sacrifice yourself for yeah. progress. Progress no still that now. He also has the honour of being on my favourite Wikipedia page, which is a list of inventors killed by their own inventions. Oh, oh so, superb! Wow, he's on there. Very good. That's good to know. That's a page because Higgy's a big fan of Murderpedia. <laughs> Murderpedia. That's a great way. Your Murderpedia. Oh, I'm all over it. Yeah, great. <laughs> Glad to meet someone else who looks at it. Yeah. It's fucking sick. I get lost in it. It's amazing. How, how long is this inventors killed by their own inventions? Is it quite a... It's quite extensive, yeah. yeah. And it's divided by centuries. That's how long have people have wow. been dying by their own inventions. Mm. In my second favourite page is a list of sexually active popes. <laughs> Very good. Are these ones who haven't had the fix or they're just... Yeah, of- my, a lot of them were real bad. Yeah, okay. real, bad real bad dudes. <laughs> real bad. As with the inventors though, the more modern ones be very interesting. Like inventors killed by something now. It's just like a fucking sex machine or something. Uh, but, yeah. yeah. You know, modern popes, any of them? When was the last one who's calling himself sexually active? It, it's not for a while now, right. sadly. Yeah. Bays also be underpl- underpaid warehouse employees. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, this good bloke Otto is also listed as the father of aviation. He's oh. another one. Got oh, a lot of dads right. aviation. Yeah, a lot yeah. of dads. Yeah. Where's the mum? Where's, Where's the, the fun aunt <laughs> yeah. of aviation? Honestly, I feel like you've, you've gotten ladies involved earlier. They pr- you probably would have worked it out rather, uh, rather than just going, I reckon I need a tail. Yeah. Thanks. Is there, is there a creepy uncle of aviation? Yeah. If you got your dick and balls out, you go further. Yeah. I need heaps of kids to push me off this cliff. <laughs> <laughs> they also can't be wearing pants. <laughs> The science. <laughs> the science. Well, in the same way that two brothers took balloons to the next level, two more brothers took modern aviation one step further, the Wright brothers, who we actually have a whole episode on. Do you remember mm-hmm. that one, Jess? Uh, vaguely. Probably remember that. We were, I talked about that way back on episode 85. It's, okay. been, oh, it's been a long time ago. <laughs> that is two of our whole shows ago, Heggy. Yeah. have done over 300. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, fuck. We're going to we're gonna have to kill them. <laughs> 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 to catch up. To overtake them, Yeah. <laughs> Um, man, in terms of fight, like a lot of brothers involved in the early flight. You can't tell me the Wright brothers didn't punch they on must with each other. That's right? a good point. Fuck that. Like yeah. you couldn't work with a brother and not have a punch up, especially back then. <laughs> Plus they're in Kitty Hawk in um, right. North Carolina, the home of grubbery as we've discovered. <laughs> in oh, the North absolute Carolina. absolute epicentre of grubs in yeah. North Carolina. <laughs> when we started mid-flight brawl, we thought it was just going to be Gold Coast, Bali, bit of Manchester, but North Carolina <laughs> comes up more than anywhere. Wow. Really? They're, they're ready to fight. Yeah, there's something, something, I don't know something if about a, the joint. I don't know. Big connecting just, hub for an air. Like something's happening. Yeah, I don't know. Mm. Just a central sort so, of spot for fighting. But I mean, the Wright brothers, there was just no sniveling little turd filming it. So, of course, they had biffs. They must yeah. Have. yeah, for sure. But we love those sniveling little turds for filming it because now you have content. Well, yeah. Oh, yeah. So Absolutely. we appreciate Thanks. it now. Yeah. <laughs> now, they're playing, the Wright brothers playing. Were they sitting one in front of the other? Because that is. I'm trying to think about their aircraft. Uh, I think a few Cropex uh, over the back, yeah. ear flick. That's how, yeah. the, that's how the, the clavicle cockpit, rub. Yeah. The cockpit was invented. Yeah. <laughs> I had my little brother sit behind me, a fucking nightmare. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Punching me. Gotta keep an eye on the bastard, yeah. <laughs> I think it might be even uh, even worse in that it was one at a time, so they're probably yeah, fighting right. over who gets to go. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think it was one. They did have a passion. I remember I've, um, you know, Thomas Selfridge that Orville took up and fucking killed. <laughs> what? <laughs> Orville Wright took up a passenger like an army lieutenant, Thomas Selfridge, yeah, that's right. and um, the propeller split, plane crashed, Orville survived. So did Thomas, but the next day he died. Oh. But then no one gave a fuck. It was like, oh, you're still a hero, Orville. You've, you know, look what you've done. The next year, ticket tape parades, whatever. What about Thomas? <laughs> Who cares? Who cares? <laughs> Who cares? <laughs> Don't worry about it. It's not unlike when your hero and God, uh, like a, a footy player here, does, you know, oh. Like actual God just kills a teenager in his house in a pool or something. You go, oh, bloody good kicker though. So. <laughs> He's all right. <laughs> yeah, never makes the real. Jolly good show. Never makes the YouTube highlights package. Yeah. The no. yellow <laughs> tape going around the, <laughs> the pool in the kitchen. <laughs> so, yeah, there are there. Uh, each brother flew their wooden gasoline-powered propeller biplane, the right flyer, twice, four flights in total, with the shortest lasting 12 seconds and the longest Sustaining flight for about 59 seconds. Oof. Wow. And that's actually the world's, I think the world's shortest flight is around that mark. It's somewhere in the UK to a little island. And oh, I, yes. It's around it's like a, a minute. Scottish island or something yeah. like that. Yeah. It's like a minute, minute 13. Proper plane take off and landing. <laughs> they almost did it. The Wright Brothers. <laughs> they almost did yeah. it. Yeah. Build a bridge, wouldn't you? <laughs> yeah. For a minute. Yeah. yeah. For a minute flight. Yeah. <laughs> that's crazy. Someone hates driving there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Only planes. Do they still do like the safety oh. uh, demonstration <laughs> oh, at the start? Yeah. <laughs> Serve up a drink. <laughs> <laughs> just Shorts. a snack. Just a snack. Just <laughs> yeah. a short flight. Just a muffin. <laughs> I flew from Sydney to Canberra and the steward, they were panicked. You're yeah. in the air for such a short time. They're like throwing cookies to people. Basically oh, yeah. Trying yeah, to yeah. Get you can't get it done. Yeah. Oh, I've done it on a little one of them. Yeah, they just stand at the front. It's fucking scabby. Yeah. Just boiled sweets. <laughs> chucking them, yeah, good chucking luck. them down the aisle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've, I flew Canberra to Melbourne uh, last weekend mm. on Quantum. They said we're only in the air for 32 minutes. And, and I said, okay, there's the booze. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They said it's only 32 minutes. Two then. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just, just the two I'll things. I just have two yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you got my... just, I felt like a dog, just a head on, yeah. A, yeah. Head on an angle. Yeah. Why? 
Yeah, you said 32 minutes. Yeah, no, I'm not hearing you. You're not hearing me, though. It's strange. Also, I don't want to create a scene, but uh, the TV in my headrest isn't working. Can you you get that going? I want to watch a movie. (laughs) So they're the first to do it, probably. There's a bit of debate over who did it first, but most people think the Wright Brothers uh, some Brazilian guy that we always get messages from. Brazilian people are taught that uh, another guy did. You know this? Let me guess. A Brazilian? Yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. It's a bit first fleety, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. uh, Albo- Alberto Santos Dumont. Okay. That's right. Oh. So I apologize uh, to any Brazilian listeners. Uh, we then, but I looked into it. Look how the Wright brothers pipped him. Uh, we then <laughs> entered the pioneer era of aviation that lasted until World War One broke out. And there's a lot of experimentation going on during this time. But by 1914, the tractor configuration biplane had become the most popular form of aircraft design and would remain so until the end of the 20s. A tractor configuration refers to an aircraft constructed in this standard configuration with its engine mounted with the propeller in front of it so the aircraft looks like it's, it's pulled through the air yeah. mm. rather than jet engines, I guess. That's one of the – they'd start it. Spinning it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get it going. Always. <laughs> Terrifying. No, yeah. The flight I took from Canberra to Sydney, it had what? propellers. Yeah. Once we took a flight from, do you remember this, Jess, from uh, Dublin to Glasgow? We're on the time. No, oh, she doesn't remember. <laughs> she doesn't <laughs> yeah, remember, remember what happened. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but do you remember I turned to you and said, it's got propellers? <laughs> yeah, you were quite panicked. <laughs> I was panicked. Oh, really? <laughs> that would have been a bit of Stobart <laughs> Air or something. One of those yeah. little Air Lingus. It was Air Lingus. Air Lingus, Air Lingus. Yeah. Yeah, We yeah, missed, we missed the first flight. Because uh, what we Jess was buying a magnet, I was filling up my bottle of water. Wow! Yeah, we missed. You must all it took. First, that's all it took. You must be the first Jesus. sober people to miss a flight <laughs> yeah. in Dublin. The They're guy, like, no, no, no. I've, look, breath me. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, I'm oh, fine. I, but I've got this adorable uh, magnet now. Check out this magnet. magnet. I can have this left without you. When these fucking nerds look yeah. at them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Three water Australians magnets, leave them. Piss off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they leave anyone dumb enough to go to the airport gift shop. <laughs> <laughs> Propellers are good though. There was a Rex flight the other year that just dropped one off. Yeah, Melbourne to Wagga or something, just dropped a propeller over Aubrey, oh. just kept going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, landed. We'll come back for Didn't that. Didn't know. Yeah. We'll yeah. Pick it up on the way Didn't back. Know. Well, I think some people in the in the um, cabin let them know that yeah. something bad had happened, but you can land it on one. So every, every flight in the world has to be within three hours of one engine. So that's why sometimes you fly overseas, you go, why the fuck are we going this way? Ah. And there's all these little airports, just in case engines fail, you can get there on one. Ah, that's good yeah. to know. Because sometimes you look at, you're watching the map, as I do, why yeah. watch a film when I can watch where yeah. we are, and you go, why, where are we, why are we yeah. going out there and then turning left? Is that there pilot you go. lost? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. I, was, I was sitting in the traffic lights recently and this um, like motorbike with big cube of food on the back Going the other way pretty quick, hit a pothole. Lots of potholes in Sydney at the moment and just fucking lost its cube of food. Kept going. Didn't note it, notice. Oh, what are we having for dinner tonight, kiddos? <laughs> That's like a video game. It's like Mario Kart. Yeah. Just fucking knocked a tikka masala out of it. <laughs> Bang. I'll pick that up. Thank you very much. <laughs> then World War One kicks off and it often is a way. Uh, that means more development in uh, technology. People throw money at the war, so there planes yeah. really took off mm. and became an aerial arms race of sorts, according to the Illustrated Encyclopedia of Military Aircraft. <laughs> Familiar with this website? Mm. Hi. It's, my it's my homepage. Wow. For yeah. Interest. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, France was the war's leading aircraft manufacturer, producing nearly 68,000 planes during World War One. Of those, nearly 53,000 were shot down, crashed or damaged. Wow. So, still buy cheap, buy twice. Yeah, <laughs> buy cheap, buy twice. Put more money in. <laughs> yeah. Fine. What a time though to be pumping out planes. <sighs> World War One under pressure. Oh. It's when you work the best. <laughs> <laughs> We're just like the world's biggest plane just got wrecked in the Ukraine. Oh yeah. Yeah, they just blew it up. Oh, bummer. That huge thing. It looks like any time you see it, like this is a video game. They they flew yeah. it to Perth the other year. It can fly oh. other. It can fly massive aircraft parts around. It can fly tanks, everything, and it was just sitting there in the Ukraine and, you know, just like when any looting happens, they're just going to fucking burn it. You go, well, just leave it alone. It's leave not it doing anything. Yeah. It's not a war yeah, plane. Yeah, yeah. It's just a big plane. <laughs> just take the plane. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Even the Taliban just kept the helicopters and stuff. They're like, cheers, lads. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for leaving we'll the keys fig- in the ignition. <laughs> yeah, we'll figure this out. <laughs> <laughs> this has got to be a YouTube video. I love planes, but I'm not at the point. 
I hope it's not an age thing. I hope it's more a personality thing to turn up to an airport to see one arrive. Yeah. Like I'm not, hey, kids, oh. the world's biggest plane's coming so to Geelong. So you reckon if that big one no. had come, you wouldn't have bothered? No, I think it did come to Melbourne. Melbourne or Perth, it came to a few years ago. Mm. People were wrapped. Oh, no. <laughs> not for you? <laughs> no. I feel like wartime. Like it's just yeah. that's a weird thing to do. Get yeah. your kids in the car and go and watch a plane coming in. <laughs> yeah, like when oh, people used to that. turn up to see a train arrive. Yeah. We, we've, we've evolved <laughs> past that. We had that the other week where I lived. Somebody had handwritten a note. To all the na- and they, they're not in our street, so they must have dropped it at all these streets near our train station. Hey, Victoria Steam Rail Society has a steam train running past this station every half an hour on Saturday. Get around. We're all meeting on this side. It's like I think you're putting wear in to try and get more people to your <laughs> fucking solo venture yeah. to watch the yeah, steam yeah. train. <laughs> <laughs> and did you go? No. <laughs> I asked my three-year-old. He was like, I'm okay. Oh, I'm yeah. fine. <laughs> seen, I'm one, right. seen one on television. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck it. It's okay. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just uh, before and during the First World War that people started to look ahead and fantasise about the idea of commercial travel on aircraft. And according to history.com, the first commercial flight was on New Year's Day 1914 pilot Tony Yanis transported a single passenger, the mayor, Abe Field of St. Petersburg, Florida, crossed Tampa <laughs> Bay via his flying boat, the St. Petersburg Tampa Air Boat Line. Okay. Wow. Oh, nice. so, so he named the airline for the first flight. <laughs> the flight was 23 miles, mostly along the Tampa Bay shore, in case something went wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Cost five bucks. 2,000 people watched yeah, the flight. They rocked course. up to watch There we go. Of course. Well, it charged yeah. the mayor. Yeah. Mayor wow. Bucks. The mayor, mayor paid for it. <laughs> Five bucks. Well, did he or did he just pinch the money off the people? Yeah, yeah, probably. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the plane flew no higher than 50 feet or 15 oh. metres over the water. <laughs> That's not enough. Oh. Halfway to Tampa, the engine misfired and he touched down in the bay, made some adjustment, adjustments and took off again. Oh, oh wow. A fiver back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, surely. <laughs> Imagine this would lay the foundation for the commercial airline industry. <laughs> How? <laughs> That's where it started. Yeah. It? And I also love that they've heard the stats out of France in World War Two that you yeah. know, ninety percent of the planes have just smashed or fucking been shot down. And they're like, We should get a lot of people in our family on these yeah, and go yeah. somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> we should use these for holidays. <laughs> should you? From all the sort of glitz and romance of early flight, though, um, when the world had hope for the future and people wearing their best clothes to get on a plane, call each other sir and madam, <laughs> yeah, mm, okay. being polite for the sake of it, not just just fucking get something for free. Um, through to now where you can just have an actual fight at a boarding gate and um, <laughs> when they say you've got to have more than your undies on to get on a plane, <laughs> that you're not allowed to have 18 beers and start screaming at strangers <laughs> or you don't get to sit there you know, and, and call the flight attendants slags. Um <laughs> Well, it's just come about because it's too fucking. It's too fucking easy for a long time. I think we need another war. <laughs> and, okay. Victimhood such an attractive prospect. People are lining up to be one now. So, um, they are some of my favourite stories. The influencers that aren't allowed on a plane. Yeah. They're like, why? Because of this. And I'm like, mm, yeah, maybe. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm not a prude, but it's a. Why would you want your bare back on a fucking plane seat? Yeah, yeah. That's oh, the number oh, yeah. one to me. That just is skin, gross. Skin on plane seat yeah. is a. It's like this isn't for the other pet. This is for your health and yeah. safety. Yeah. Put a top on. I'm Ooh. doing you a favour, mate. I just get away with those string muscle singlets, though. Gross. On, on Jetstar. Yeah, yeah, on Jetstar. You see like a muscle man get on with those. Yeah. Might as well not have anything on. Mm. Yeah. It's not on. It's well, you not don't on. have to get in a suit, but yeah. still, fuck. Yeah. Just do one, something. One slight bit of turbulence from two nipples showing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I won't even wear a tracksuit on the plane. No, you won't. Dave travels in jeans and no. and and boots. I'm traveling jeans, I wouldn't go that far. What are you wearing no. on a plane? This. Uh, I wear shorts, shorts, shorts and shoes and stuff. Yeah. yeah, jeans is too uncomfortable for yeah. a long plane. You're not. You're not long haul flight jeans. Yes, we're talking when mm-hmm. we've flown to the UK. Wow. Yeah, he'll be in jeans. Yeah, I've, I've, I ask economy. Economy. Yeah. Economy so, jeans like a f- oh. <laughs> It's yeah. called respect for your fellow passengers. Are they I loose around the crotch jeans? Are they, what, you know, yeah. How do you nah. adjust for 24 oh, no. hours? Absolutely just, not. No. Just sit there and suck it up. Oh, man. That is. Get off in London. 
pull them off, put them in the bin, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go to passport control. <laughs> These cannot be cleaned enough. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I've got a fresh pair in my carry-on. I like your way of doing it though because everyone, you know, you try and find more comfortable ways to fly but you just go the opposite. Yeah. Like I'm putting jeans on yeah. so now this chair doesn't feel so bad. I'm in jeans. Yeah, you know? I'm not feeling shit. Yeah, <laughs> I'm feeling shit. Just embrace it. <laughs> jeans on a long-haul flight, far out. Yeah, no. Nah. I've had to switch to trousers um, for long hauls because I'll wear those. <laughs> Those socks, you know, the compression yeah. socks. Oh, yeah. 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 Wow. I wear them now. I've, I've reached that um, <laughs> stage of my life. So those and shorts, not great. Yeah. Yeah, no, nah, fair. Do they just give you that in the prostate exam show bag? <laughs> 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 On the I way out is some compression socks. <laughs> I went to France about five years ago. My feet just blew up the day I got there. Like, yeah. I couldn't walk. Mine do that, but that's just from the sheer amount of booze I consume yeah. on a long haul flight. <laughs> <laughs> my head's bigger, my legs, <laughs> my gut. I'm a fucking disaster. Yeah. I had to roll him off the plane. Oh, I, say, I try and drink the ticket value. <laughs> yeah. I try and come out financially in front, <laughs> yeah. you know, physically years behind, but financially in front. This is worth it. <laughs> I find if the, the tighter your jeans are, you can, uh, you can get away with the compression. Oh, tight yeah, okay. <laughs> compression machine. Skinny, skinny jeans yeah, skinny on a long jeans. haul flight. Yeah. Like a lunatic. <laughs> My legs ain't blowing up. Are you just bursting out of them like the Hulk at the other yeah, end? Yeah. <laughs> I look at the end of a long haul flight. Have you seen Interstellar? Mm. Now when they go to that water planet and come back, it's been seven years for the bloke. That, yeah. That's me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get off on their glasses and cane. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are grown up. <laughs> 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 Dad left when I was three. <laughs> I've missed his 21st. It's <laughs> a lot of beers. <laughs> well, I'm getting I'm getting to the to the modern uh, the modern age of the more commercial airlines we know. The three oldest uh, airlines that still exist, you know where they are? British Airways. No. Qantas. Qantas is third. Ooh. Okay. 1920. That's the uh, Australian carrier. American Airlines. No, number oh. one is uh, KLM from the oh, Netherlands. Wow. Oh, 1919, yeah. so that Pips Qantas by a year. And Columbia's Avianca, also Ooh. 1919. Oh, wow. Still going. Avianca, uh, one of the world's largest uh, air crash investigations, I think, was an Avianca. Like, yeah. I think Avianca might, may have been a r- r- run out of petrol in the sky or a. Um, from that era? Whoopsie daisy. I didn't know someone was on this runway as well. Right. No, I ah. think maybe 70s or 80s. <laughs> That's interesting. They were both 1919 and then Qantas, Qantas in, 20, 19, in 1920. 20. That's cool. That's bad. Yeah. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think news just got out here? Well, like, fuck it. We've got to join yeah. in. <laughs> yeah. It'll be yeah. up in the air. They had it ready in 1918 and they just got the, <laughs> the uh, telegram through. <laughs> <laughs> well, in 1919 uh, they were basically using converted wartime bombers. 14 passengers lounging in comfortable wicker chairs. Wicker? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I had a different idea of comfort back then. <laughs> in a suit on a wicker chair, is it? Yeah. That's bad. That's bad. footage of theatres back then, like movie theatres and shit. Fuck, it looked terrible. Yeah. <laughs> it does not look comfy. Oh, man. You'd want the movie to be nice and short. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Especially with people just punching durries next to you the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <Just> smoking inside <laughs> as you're up. <laughs> oh. But it was the 30s when it really took off, especially in the USA, because just 6,000 people travelled commercially by aeroplane in 1930. Four years later, that number would multiply by 75 times. Wow. 450,000 passengers in 34. And then a couple of years later, 1.2 million were travelling by air every year. And what was it like? Well, very expensive for one. A flight from London to Brisbane in Australia would, for instance, uh, which was the longest route available in 1938, took 11 days and included two dozen scheduled stops. Wow. Four. Like a cruise oh. ship. Sky <laughs> cruise. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a lot of takeoffs well just landings. fucking yeah. jump. <laughs> when it's just jump, then you just walk there. Yeah. Do um, leapfrog <laughs> with a bunch of other people. You fucking get in and yeah. play those. Because my grandparents, my mum's parents were the 10-pound tourists, mm-hmm. you know, the 10-pound poms. Yeah. And they, I think that took months. Yeah. But having heard that, it's like, who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that much longer. Yeah, twenty four stops, and it would cost uh, twenty thousand US dollars in today's Whoa. money for that. Whoa. Wow, so very very expensive. 
Holy well, shit. When you got to Brisbane from London, you'd spent your 20 grand. Yeah. Oh, fuck. And you're in Brisbane. There's nothing to do here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, 22-day trip isn't bad. <laughs> Just yeah. back to London. Yeah. <laughs> Turn it around. And then World War II accelerated the introduction of jet engines, which at first were used for military aircraft, but then were used by passengers too. And they were able to fly much higher, faster, and, and further than older piston-powered uh, propylenas or propylenas. Pro- uh, anyway, Prop- don't worry about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Mr. Propylena. Yeah. <laughs> They've got to change that song now, War. Yeah. <laughs> What's it good for? What's oh, it good for? Fucking, fucking flying technology. real far. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 You're going by boat if people didn't punch on. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, in the 50s, it really took off again. That's when uh, the uh, the jet age took a, a big step forward. The Boeing 707 debuted Ooh. in 1958. <laughs> and uh, Pan American Airways became the first commercial carrier to take delivery from the elongated swept wing planes, launching daily flights from New York to Paris and became a modern symbol of post-war modernity. So that's Fancy. when... There we go. We're starting age. like this. We're hearing Boeing. We're hearing words like Boeing. Yeah. We're on the up and up. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's a 737 Max and then <laughs> whoopsie daisy. We're back down. We've got to fix some of that <laughs> software. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. And, yeah, that's when people dressed up and flight attendants uh, reflected the epitome of chic. Mm. Yeah. To quote well, from still history.com. Do. Still do. Oh. No, nah, now it's fake buns and stuff. Yeah. I've seen that. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen that? I've seen someone put on it like clip in a fake yeah. bun. Yeah. Put the jacket on at the end. They're just tricking everyone outside. Yeah. Like, you are yelling at me. <laughs> <up> another bourbon. <laughs> I was like, uh, enjoy your trip, sir. Go, hold on. Hang on a second. <laughs> You're very different on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> what is no, ground I'm, attitude? I imagine on your show you talk at least a little bit about low-cost carriers. Oh. Oh, a little do bit, we? yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> we do. <laughs> well, the largest one in the world is Southwest Airlines, which was founded in Texas way back in 1967 by Herb Kelleher and the incredibly named Roland King. Oh, Sick. Roland <laughs> King. I also think you don't hear enough herbs now. Yeah. There's not, not a lot, lot of herbs. dudes called herbs. Yeah. Herb will come back. It should. I'm, I've, I've never <laughs> heard like, of another Roland. No, so, that's fair as well. Roland? Not Roland. Roland. Roland King. That's Roland good. King. That is good. Legends. I will be having a third child. Yeah. <laughs> My wife and I were talking about it, but now, now I know that Decision combo's made. on the table. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, I, basically I mentioned that just because I wanted to say Roland King, but um, <laughs> they started the low-cost thing by he. They, they're from Texas and uh, the price controls and market regulations imposed by the Federal Aeronautics Board, he decided, they won't apply to me because we're just flying in Texas. Yeah. And people tried to sue and stop him because undercutting everyone else. But uh, they couldn't stop him and then he just built an empire from it. And yeah. basically people like Richard Branson and uh, Ryanair's Michael O'Leary, oh. people, EasyJet, have all acknowledged their debt to the Southwest and its inspirational business model. So we can thank Roland King. Oh, we <laughs> haven't looked back, have we? Yeah. Michael O'Leary, he's great. He's someone that's like, we're trying to figure out if people can just stand. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any, we're try- any we're trying to get 10p for the toilet, you know. Uh, yeah, he yeah. doesn't give a shit. <laughs> I give a fuck. But he's like, it's 40 minutes. Who cares? Do a wee beforehand or pay your 10p or whatever. And, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just stand and hold on to something. <laughs> stand. And people would. Yeah. If you could make it happen, people would do it. Yeah. If Set- it was dirt cheap. Yeah. Yeah, you'd do it. Um, All the way through to today, we haven't looked back from that. And it's been a fucking absolute boon for us um, more than anything. Um, way through to today, if you can, can cast your mind back, mate, to February 6, 2018. New York City to Syracuse. Uh, Delta Airlines, fairly cheap. Not quite as, you know, Ryanair-ish. But, um, They're good, Delta. Yeah, I don't know. I'll they were Virgin's partner. They're good for America. Yeah, I think Americans come over here and hop on our, you know, Qantas and Virgin, yeah. and they're blown away. Mm, you it's know, like the olden days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, Susan Perez was the last passenger on board, a graduate from NYU with a degree in international trauma studies. They're just fucking making shit up now, aren't they? <laughs> um, <laughs> doing a tight degree on nearly anything. I don't, I don't know what you got. Do you have, have you studied degrees on yeah. stupid shit? Yeah, drama. So okay. Yeah. Well, you know. First thing I studied. Was, <laughs> Love that you're like, it it trauma. No, drama. Yeah, I'm listening. Uh, yeah. That, is, that exists. That's a thing. Yeah. 
international trauma after covering two world wars in the last yeah. 10 minutes. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Let me set the scene. <laughs> <laughs> the first degree I got into out of school was um, it was a Bachelor of Arts, but it was Creative Arts and Culture. Oh, okay. I dropped out of that one. Oh, waste of uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm joking>. <laughs> <laughs> it was. I left. Creative Arts and Culture. The only but, culture jobs no. are in the NRL. Yeah. Rugby league. They need a head of culture. <laughs> <laughs> <Good> <laughs> man. They need to fix the culture. <laughs> All right, guys, let's do some play stuff. <laughs> Maybe calm down a bit. Yeah. We'll do some painting. You guys want to do a puzzle? Hey? Still puzzle. Be fun. <laughs> um, 19-year-old Marissa Rundell was on the plane with her eight-month-old son, Mason, right. uh, for the one-hour, 15-minute flight. Susan, she wasn't happy about her back seat allocation. She began muttering to herself. And um, I used to actively seek out the back seat when I was you know, booking a flight. You can sit there picking your nose, flicking at whoever you want. Row yeah. 30. Put your fucking seat back. Yeah. yeah. You aren't near kids though, generally. Yeah, That's they'll put, they they will put kids down there. Yeah. Um, uh, well, one downside though, the FA still come through and wake you up and go, put your seat forward. Oh, fuck, why? So you yeah. got to sort of put them all back so that maybe they don't notice. <laughs> but sometimes they still do. Have you ever um, had the one where you get back there and you can't move the seat back? Oh. Yeah, I have. Yeah, the it's wall? a mistake. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that is rough. That's yeah. not happening ever again. I'm on Seat Guru <laughs> before every long haul flight. I love it. <laughs> I'm reading reviews, not only on airlines, on specific seats, on specific aircraft. So do you, do you ever do any reviews? No, I don't leave D13, them. absolutely loved it. <laughs> <laughs> Had a great time in D13. Yeah, well. um, oh, the way, Susan appeared to have three seats to herself in the back row and was doing some oh. muttering and whinging. What's Still she whinging. upset about? Back seat. She, it's I called like Bogan it. Business Class if you get a whole row. <laughs> yeah. That's the yeah. best. Put She's saying about. Oh. Happened to me once was the greatest flight of my life. Yeah. yeah. She's muttering up the fucking bitch ass back of the plane. <laughs> was her quote. Gosh, Marissa it. asked Susan not to swear in front of her child. We've got to protect the children. Eight <laughs> months old. Rack off. They don't know yeah, anything. That, yeah. They're not look at their fat that. little faces. They don't know a fucking thing, man. Nah. You, you have to stop swearing in front of your kids until you get a phone call from Kindy. <laughs> <laughs> They don't, they don't pick it up. Yeah. You know, they'll let you know. They don't even know fear eight-month-olds. I've yeah. got one in my house right now and I'm yeah. running at him full speed and try a karate kick and go, what's up, motherfucker? <laughs> he just laughs. It's the best age. <laughs> if I do it to the three-year-old, he'd freak out. Yeah. I don't know, at some point. <laughs> Somewhere in between eight yeah. months and three. Yeah, so that's why I used out. to wake yeah. one up, just start the chainsaw over the cock. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Tony, get up. Yeah. Um, so, but is this lady worried that her eight months first – Words are going to be fucking back of the fucking plane. back ass bitch of the plane, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, what, Timmy? I'd be um, quite proud of that, actually. Good sentence structure. <laughs> yeah, that's right, full sentence. Yeah. Susan. I don't, I don't want to judge, but she's a teen mum with a son named Mason. Yeah. I don't reckon Susan's swear word is the first one that's been heard. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Susan immediately put her other degree into practice, a BA in European history and romance languages. Fucking waste of time. Um, her reply to Marissa was, shut the fuck up and shove it. <laughs> Baby didn't say a thing. Is that French? Um, yeah. Beautiful then, language. Then, <laughs> beautiful. Language of love. <laughs> so, right, yeah. um, then she said, I'm not sitting here crying baby. And Marissa said, he won't cry the whole time. Flight attendant Tabitha came over. Tabitha was clearly born in about 1965, part of the Bewitched TV series. <laughs> um, and the exchange involved like her going, you know, stop swearing, stop being a dickhead. And, and um, Susan just said, you know, I'm not having this. What's your name? You're not going to have a job tomorrow, Tabitha. That's oh. what she said. God, Susan's so not having that. a good day, is she? Nah. She's having a shit one. Yeah. Um, also, if you're in row 30, you don't have the power to take anyone's job. No. Well, <laughs> next to the toilet at the back. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and okay. Tabitha, for that, she said, I want this woman off the plate. And then Susan has just fallen apart knowing that she's getting chucked off the plane. She's like, no, I'm sorry. If I don't, I can't get home. I've got, I've got to take this plane. I'm sorry. I apologise. So, I was stressed out. Crocodile tears, that sort of shit. <laughs> too little, too late. I mean, the plane took off without incident or Susan. Um, <laughs> see you, Susan, last in, first out. Um, Marissa took some footage just to show her family. It went viral. It's not that good. But um, this, she's like, this lady thought she was going to be rude to me and Mason. Now she has no way home today, Marissa said triumphantly. She later removed it among the furor, though. They should have kicked her out. She should have said Mason and I. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're out too. <laughs> you go. I don't think anyone has ever said Mason and I. <laughs> Doesn't happen. Um, Brayden and myself, we're heading yeah. out. <laughs> to whom are you talking, Jaden? No. Um, she felt bad a woman may lose her job just for being a fuckhead. 
And that's a, that's a fairly rare trait these days for the youth. They yeah. want to you, you mob ever ruin someone? Have you ever ruined someone's life on a whim? <laughs> Oh, Not yeah. on a whim, no. Because you're having a bad day, you can. It's Very easy. much planned. <laughs> Get amongst it. <laughs> you got to bend it at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <That's what laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, you must. Susan, she was working for the NY Council of the Arts on 95K a year. Thank you very much. Ooh. Even stated mid-tanty that she worked for the governor. Not for long. Sacked because <gasps> of her behaviour off the clock. Oh. So, I, don't know if I, I don't know if I can get behind that. You see people on Twitter say things like, oh, you know, these are my views, not my employer. How does that work? Like, Usually you can't the, just go and have a tant in real life then, get filmed and fucking you get sacked. Yeah, that's true. Usually it's the employer saying everybody has to put that in their Twitter bios, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just a couple of emails I've received. Um, yeah. <laughs> After some <laughs> sus tweets. Yeah, you know me. Yeah. Here's my vengeance list. <laughs> yeah. I'm coming. I've uh, uh, used my own. <laughs> I happen to know one Nicholas J. Cody lost his blue tick status for um for all the fist pumping MRA stuff and <laughs> and the, the pro guns pro guns sort of thing. I think it was that, wasn't it? No, I didn't. Lo- I somebody tried to get into my Twitter account. I got log- I got locked out of it. Tried oh. to get back in. It was linked to an old email address. I didn't know the thing to that. Channel Nine got me back in. And uh, then I had a look around Twitter and went, oh, no, this was as fucked as <laughs> yeah. I remember it. Just logged out, never went back in, and the blue tick just went away. It just disappeared. Think if you tw- don't tweet for long enough, it just goes. Ah, yeah. okay. So mm. keep it up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> keep <laughs> tweeting. Yeah. <laughs> Susan, she works somewhere else now. Never heard a peep out of her since. Her social media has gone dead. She is on LinkedIn, though. You'd be happy to know. Yeah. Um, she works for, now she works for Foxhole Productions. TV company, like every American company. Um, <laughs> it's like a converted warehouse situation, one of those where not much happens, but it looks innovative and cool. Um, they definitely rip people off to pay the rent so they can brainstorm in bean bags all the live long day and <laughs> fucking play ping pong or whatever it is you people do. Um, not, not to be confused, though, with a different Foxhole Productions, this one's with, with two X's because it's owned by one of your biggest comedy influencers. Jamie Fox. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, life after being cancelled or shamed like this, though, it's, it's going to be tough on, yeah. my, on my family when it happens. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it can't be. It's not, not. It's not easy. I know people talk about it, but comedians are held to a fairly high standard here. Imagine if we were allowed to fucking just bash actors. Oh. That'd be sick. <laughs> I'd be in Hollywood every holiday, <laughs> just laying these little men out. <laughs> Back to La La Land. <laughs> Dad, that's Tom Cruise. No way. He says he's an action hero. He's five six. Yeah. <laughs> you can't be him. In in heels. He played, Jack, taking him. he played Jack Reacher. There's no way. <laughs> he played. That was the greatest oh, casting. You know that he bought. He, I, th- I believe Tom Cruise bought the rights to Jack Reacher. So he could play Jack Reacher, who in the book is like a six foot four fucking ripped unit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Tom Cruise is like, well, I own it, so I'll stand on a box and bash people. <laughs> yeah. Whatever, just let me get my Apple box. I'm going to slap you. Um, my mum right. loves those Lee Child books. She was furious when Tom Cruise was was cut. Oh yeah, <laughs> she was like, what? Should have been Dolph Lundgren. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> wow, that'd be good. <laughs> is he still in great shape, Dolph? Yeah. Um, I reckon Susan's done the best thing here. Just shut up and got on with her life. Yeah. She didn't didn't feed the trolls or anything. Marissa Rundell, she uh, she now works as an office administrator at New York Icons where you can install your child in a tumbling or cheer class and they'll all win first prize. Oh, wow. Uh, until they reach nice. much later. They realise that uh, being told you're the best all the time may not be a good idea. Um, <laughs> Icons, their motto is we are iconic and we don't give up except in adulthood when we're worn out <laughs> and need to spend all our money on a therapy to explain why mum wanted us to train 12 hours a day instead of go to actual fucking school. What do you think the success ratio is? Is it higher on like a voice or X factor or a, a child, um, what are they called? Gymnast, a, a cheerleader. Yeah, kid. what are they called? The little parades? Like the like a pageant? Yeah, like a pageant. <laughs> Pageantry. Yeah. John Bonet. Who's pumped out more actual successful people? Pageants. Or an X Factor voice. Ah, Probably it'd pageants. Have to be, you reckon? <laughs> I think pageants so. with the modelling industry or something. Yeah, and I reckon a lot of actors and singers and stuff. I think if a lot of them would have been in pageants as a child. That's oh, my yeah, guess. doubling up, yeah. double threat, triple threat. <laughs> yeah, but an X Factor or a voice that's like being a twenty-six-year-old gymnast. 
it's yeah. too late. Yeah. You know what they've they've never managed to do though from all the pageants. So they haven't managed to crack this world peace thing they all keep talking no, about. No, but God, they're passionate they about it. it, aren't they? They all want it. <laughs> but they want it bad enough. Yeah, I don't think so. Nobody's doing anything oh, about they're it. They're solving the Iraq. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> <laughs> the <I> right. <laughs> so um I don't know how we finished this up. Sorry, Rad. We're gonna have to <laughs> wrap it up there. The was that the... yeah. yeah, that's the end of my fucking little bit of it's great. <laughs> this is why I love Heggy. You just never know. it just stops. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Wouldn't spend an hour. Just turn... well over an hour. We're yeah. fine. No, this is spot on an hour. Oh, oh. okay. Yep. Hey Ripper. Bang. All that's right. it. That brings us to the end of the do go on. Slash mid flight brawl remix. Spectacular. Combo. Spectacular. Yeah. Spectacular. Spectacular. Yes. Sorry. Spectacular. <laughs> I don't mind remix. Remix yeah. is all right. Breakfast makes... radio, really, in my head. Yeah. Come straight in from there. Remix. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Khaled. Sorry, everyone. I didn't know to yell that. <laughs> His toxic and pony played at the same time, but we'll call it a remix. Does it work, though? Does it that, work? They do okay. fit in. Yeah. Great. Yeah. There's a lot of songs being played on that station where someone's gone, hold on, it's the same beat, sort of. <laughs> yeah. That's got the same timing. Mash those up. There Bang. you go. Boom. <laughs> oh, Payday. someone at your station made that. No. Oh, right. Okay. Just the songs DJ. on the someone station. Else. Someone sent it in, two massive songs, and said, this is mine now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes these fuckheads just talk over an existing song. Yeah, call them, call it theirs. Yeah, brilliant. Kid Rock with uh, Sweet Home Alabama. Yeah, springs to mind. Just actually talking over the top of <laughs> yeah. Sweet Home Alabama. <laughs> Million bucks, thank you. Well, they died brilliant. in a plane crash, didn't they? When it's yeah, a lot of them did. Yeah, yeah, it's easy. You don't have to put in effort. They're not going to come after you. Should we just <laughs> play Sweet Home Alabama quietly underneath this entire <laughs> yeah, thing? Oh great. yeah, Conrad. Kid Rock, Sweet Home Alabama, <laughs> to send us out. We, we talk over him talking over us. <laughs> uh, do you have live shows coming up? Yeah, we actually do. Um, so we're doing some shows at the European Beer Cafe on Sunday nights in April. Yes. There's a couple of those left, I, I believe. Yep. Sunday nights at 8.45. We'll be doing Do Go On Live, mm-hmm. which is... Uh, Good fun. How about you guys? You guys doing shows at the comedy festival? Some stand up stuff? Uh, yeah, we I are. am. I'm, yeah. I'm doing a show every night at the European Beer Cafe, no less. It is rolling on for fucking ever. <laughs> and then because uh, you do every night, right? Yeah, I do every night. Amazing. And then, and then back uh, after Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, Brisbane. Beautiful. Yep. And I've got ten shows only at Melbourne Comedy Festival, which I think are done by the time this comes out. But then Brisbane, Sydney, Newcastle, Perth, and then. We're doing live mid-flight brawls in Hobart and Launceston in the middle of the year. So midflightbrawl.com for that. Beautiful. Great fun. And, of course, uh, your podcast comes out every week and you can find that on all the podcast apps with Midflight Brawl for more. Yeah, yeah we're not exclusive. Midflight shenanigans. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, Matt, you're fired. So rough yeah. way to find yeah. out. Luke and I have taken <laughs> over. Sorry, mate. It's so weird. Yeah, we'll give you back next week, right? Weird. Weird. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks very much for having us, guys. Oh, thank you fun. for having us. Yeah, thank you for having so, us. I don't, this is like a real polite see know, you later yeah. standoff. Yeah. I'll just do it. Just usually see it, fuck it. Bye. Yeah, I've got to go. She'll forever hold a spot inside my soul. We blister in the sun. We couldn't wait for you. And now it's time for everybody's favourite section of the show, the part where we invite Matt Stewart to join us again. Matty Stu, he's back from the loo. That's so... That was a long shit. <laughs> So, gentlemen never shit. <laughs> I was just, I just needed time He's to just myself. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I, you know, we only have the four mics, and you two said apparently Haggy and Cody are more important than me, so I subbed out. Well, where would you put yourself in the level of importance? Uh, yeah, the same. Yeah, so it made sense. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Well, why are you getting all sassy at us? But now that they've gone, I'm back. You're and back. It feels good. You're back and you're on two microphones. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> He's showing his power. And um, so I'm back mainly because this is everyone's favourite section of the show. That's right. Including my favourite uh, part of the show. It's the, f- the section of the show where we thank a bunch of our great supporters. Mm-hmm. If it wasn't for these people, this show would not exist. Uh, and we thank them in a bunch of ways. If you sign up at dogonpod.com or patreon.com slash dogonpod, there's all these different levels. You get all sorts of different rewards. Bonus episodes, uh, we do three every month. Or you get uh, you know access to the Facebook group or um, shout-outs. You get to vote on topics, all sorts of different things. 
Uh, but the things we like to do at the end of the episode is a few shout-outs. The first one's called the Fat Quote or Question section. You can be involved in this if you sign up at the Sydney Scheinberg level. And this section has a little jingle. goes something like this. Fact, quote, or question. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> really he always remembers the ding. I fucked that note. Sorry. So <laughs> on this one, people get to give us a fact, a quote, or a question, or a brag, or a suggestion, or whatever they like, really. And uh, first up this week uh, comes from Lisa David, soon to be Lisa Viana. And Lisa... Has, uh, you also get to give yourself a title. Lisa, Lisa's got the title of Personal Occupational Therapist for the Dugawan Crew. Oh, my God. Thank God. These chairs are not ergonomical. Oh, is that what an occupational therapist does? Cool. And uh, Lisa has offered a brag, which is, <laughs> I have a braggy fact for you. Okay. I'm, I'm an occupational therapist and I recently <laughs> became... We get it. <laughs> <laughs> I recently became a director of rehabilitation at an assisted living uh, centre where I get to help the elderly recover from injury or illness, regain independence and improve their quality of life. Hell yeah. You may have just figured out from context clues what an occupational therapist is. No, but in it case was me saying my chair wasn't economical actually. That helped as well for yeah. me. Um, <laughs> My job is to not find you a job, but instead it is to find creative ways to make life better. I work with older folks with a range of issues from recovering from a stroke, hip fracture, and even anxiety and depression. I've been doing this for seven years, and it's not easy, but it is so much easier ever since I started listening to you. You make a real difference every week in people's lives across the world, many of them like me who give their all to other people every day. I hope you realize how special you are. Listening to this podcast every week makes me feel strangely like I know you guys, like we are pals. Is it bizarre to to you that you have so many genuine admirers of you as people and as a podcast? Well, I just want to say it feels to you like we're friends, but that is not reciprocated. (laughs) Well, I... I reciprocate at least. I, could, uh, I couldn't I even want, get through that. That is re- so nice, I, Lisa. I Thank you very Lisa, much. I believe that you are really good at your job because you've just made me feel really good <laughs> just with an email. Yeah. So Holy thank hell. you so much. That's lovely. That's message. lovely, Lisa. And it's really cool that you do work that is, uh, you know, that it's rewarding and that you're um, is a very tangible way of saying you're helping people sometimes. And you know, you've just said we help people, but it doesn't always feel like that when we're sitting in my living room. <laughs> talking into microphones, it doesn't feel like we're helping people. So that's really cool. Yeah. That's and it, so nice. The question, is it bizarre? Is it still bizarre that you have many genuine admirers? Yeah. I'm like, I, I mean, it just doesn't. I don't, I, I don't think, I, I, I just don't think my brain believes that. Yeah. So it, it's not, it doesn't feel bizarre because it doesn't. Does seem... it just blow your mind every time we do a live show then and people turn up? Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how I'm able to, I don't know. I just. But you, you, you just sort of think that people have accidentally wandered into a room and are too polite to leave. Yeah, I just think it's a, it's a room of nice people who yeah. are supporting me Yeah, and us. And they're like, hey, we're just being, we're, they're doing us a favour. Okay, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, hey, we want to, yeah, we just want to come so you can do this, have fun. And, have fun. And, and, and hang out with your friends. Then we'll That's pretend so nice. to laugh. <laughs> Is that what you think is happening? They're relatively convincing sometimes. Yeah, they are pretty convincing. Yeah, no, of course. It's completely mind-blowing. It's very strange uh, in a, in the best possible way. It's a very su- surreal thing to experience. Uh, thank you very much for your message there, Lisa. The next one comes from Kel Wachholz, who's got the title of Official US Expert on Pie and Other Desserts. Oh, please. <laughs> Kel Listen. is offering a suggestion, writing... Jess said this was open to recipes a few episodes ago. Yeah. So I figured I'd share a good pie recipe with (gasps) y'all. This one's for sweet red bean hand pies and Thai uh, Thai tea glaze. Uh, Make pie crust. Get your your pens out. Oh, my God. Make pie crust. Mix together flour, butter, and a little sugar, salt, and apple cider vinegar. Once cooled, cut uh, cut into three inch squares. Make red bean paste. Uh, You do this by cooking red beans or azuki and blend with coconut oil and sugar. Then you assemble the pies by putting a small amount of red bean paste on one pie crust, place another pie crust on and seal. Press coarse sugar into the pie crust. Throw in the oven and bake. Let cool thoroughly once the pie crust is golden brown. 
Make glaze with Thai tea and generously top. That, Yum. Wow, that sounds great. Final step. Oh. Enjoy. Enjoy. Oh. I've added that in, but I reckon uh, that was Kel's first fact quota question for us. And Rag or suggestion. And for recipe. Thank you. Kel, you've nailed it. Thank you so much. Also, like, um, uh, simple. You know how a lot of recipe and there's a lot of jokes uh, stand-ups are doing or it's jokes on the internet about people where you go to find a recipe and it's like, I uh, uh, grew up in the summertime. And you're like, ah, oh, God damn it. Um, straight to the point. Easy to follow instructions. Yeah. Loved that. Thank you so much, Cal. Love it. Thanks, Cal. Apparently, they do all those long ones. It's for uh, there's some sort of r- reason. What do you call it? Like the SUV Algorithm or, or whatever. Not SUV. Yeah, the SUV. The sports utility vehicle. SEO. The SUV. The uh, where it's sort of like internet stuff, uh. algorithms and stuff. They do them longer, and it's sort of like those blogs make advertising revenue, and that's what. Because I remember someone complained about it and so I was on Facebook or Twitter or something and someone replied like, "It's how hard is it to scroll down? <laughs> this is how they make their money, you know? <laughs> what? All right. Um, <laughs> I I'm just, I never, yeah. It makes sense. I'm like, why does everyone do that? It makes yeah. sense that there's a, a reason for it. Uh, this next one comes from Eric Morales or Morales, uh, aka Junior Vice President of Production. <laughs> Junior Vice President of Productive Procrastination, Ooh. such as cleaning my room at 11 p.m. when I have a homework <laughs> assignment due at midnight. Oh, what are you doing? Good wow. luck fitting that on your business card. Hey? Yeah, that is lengthy. I'd, I'd uh, make that an acronym. But Dave, you're assuming the assignment isn't done. I reckon it's done. It just hasn't, you know, hit submit. I mean, <laughs> I've uh, uh, damn. That's the that made me genuinely concerned for you. Yeah, in the bit there was a bit in the middle that said that <laughs> sound like suck my something. <laughs> yeah, it really did, didn't suck, it? Suck my yeah. do. Suck my Because <laughs> I was <laughs> some of them I was just on the first letter. Some of them I forgot and was saying the, Parts su- the of word. It. Yeah. So I um suck had em, suck a blur. I had moved on and was saying something else to Dave. Turned around and Matt's doing that with his <laughs> face. Oh, <laughs> <me>. <laughs> Like, There's a hit oh on no! <laughs> I was like, something's wrong. <laughs> it took me a we bit to re- figure out. Got to reboot Matt. <laughs> you doing the acronym? I was like, oh dear. Try yeah. turning him on and off again. I was, I was going to just turn him on his side. I was going to get <laughs> Dave to call an ambulance, but we're okay. Who smells toast? <laughs> uh, so Eric has a brag writing to Matt, Jess, and the rest. Love a brag. Oh, a rest. <laughs> <laughs> Suck it. Uh, ha ha, gotcha, gotcha Dave, writes Eric. You did, because I was on your side for the brag and you immediately cut me deep. Because <laughs> uh, <laughs> people love that uh, that rule of three bit. Often in tweets and stuff, people say to Matt, Jess and the and whoever and the shit yeah. one or to Jess, Dave and the ugly guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, oh. Jess, you're nearly always included by name. Yeah, because people know not to bully me. You... Because I'll fuck them. Matt and I always, we're always <laughs> the other up, one. Fuck them up, fuck them up. They're and they do not want <laughs> They that. don't want that. Matt and I are often thrown under the bus for the gag. Yeah, because yeah. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't make jokes about a lady. Too delicate. Too delicate. As a feminist, Too I fragile. <laughs> Look at me. I'm made of glass. Nah, but don't make jokes about me, thank you. I can't handle it. <laughs> I'm made of glass. <laughs> made of glass. I don't want it. Uh, and I will fuck you. <laughs> and you don't want that. You don't want that. I'm very bad. Eric writes, to Matt, Jess and Dave, first of all, I would like to say thank you very much for all your hard work and all the laughs that you have given us through your various podcasts and other works. I started listening to the pod in my fourth year of uni in 2016 and found you all through Meso plugging the Elvis episode. Ah. I listened and loved it and had to go back to the first episode and try to find the explanation for Dave being away at a neo-Nazi university <laughs> oh, God. studying abroad for the semester. Sorry about that, Dave. Hopefully. <laughs> did we ever tell you that's what we said you were doing? Uh, here's the brag. I am now in my final semester of graduate school and will be getting my master's degree in electrical engineering in May of 2022. <laughs> I've been blessed with a full-time job offer at the place that I interned at and am now able to contribute to the Patreon of my favourite podcast. Is that us? That's us. This, <gasps> is, this is Eric's first fact quote or question oh, or brag or suggestion. Well done, Eric. Uh, Come on, Eric. Thanks again for all the laughs 
that you have given us and thank you for making these reports easy to follow without the help of visual aids. Oh. Eric M. Hey, no worries, Eric. It's because we paint a picture with our words. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, Eric, on the gig. Yeah, that's amazing. Congrats. And the final one this week comes from John Hopper. Or Hopper. John Hop. Uh, Is it Hop or Hopper? Well, it's H-O-P-P-E. Oh, Hoppy. Hoppy? Hoppe. Hoppe. Uh, hop. Could be could be any of or all of them. I love all of them. But I think, you know, if uh where's where's John from, do we know? Uh no. So if he's Australian, definitely gets called Hopper. Hopper, yeah. Big time. I'd yeah. be, I'd be calling him Hopper. Hop. Like, I got a cousin in law who's got that name and I'm sure it's pronounced Hopper. Love well, it. That's what he's known as. Uh so John is the VP for pastry appreciation. Oh. Not pasty. Those are different. Okay. Uh, whenever I travel, I like to try the local version. What's a pasty? Past, not a pasty. Well, it's past. Oh, wait, hang on. So it's pasty with a Y, not pasty with an IE. They're different. Oh, I think it's pasty like the the tr- pasty is like nipple tassels. Oh, uh, which one's which? Is why, John an appreciator? Why or? is uh, the food? Right. Isn't IE the food as well? I think it sort of depends. Pasty. Pasty. What, wait, pasty. Oh pasty. My God. <laughs> uh, and John has offered us a fact. <laughs> Dave's now Googling pasty nipple. Well, it's P-A-S-T-Y for a nipple pasty. Oh, so that is, so he's into the He's the into the nipple pasty. And he likes having the local delicacy. <laughs> um, what does that mean? What was that noise you made? <laughs> Ooh. 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 <laughs> Too hot to handle. <laughs> <laughs> Spicy. So John's offered a fact, writing, I heard someone on your show mention that Maine was the easternmost state of the US. As an Alaskan, that got me curious. I looked it up, and may I humbly offer the fact that it's that the easternmost part of the United States is a small island I do At believe we said lesson. in the continental oh, yeah, USA. We did. Oh, I remember that as well. Dave, I'm um, actually and I'm um, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you love to I, see it. I do. Yeah, I think that was on my episode about the stranger of the North Pond. That's right. And yeah, I do. I do recall spe- uh, specifying wow. it was mainland. But let's let's hear un- non mainland. Uh, so the, the easternmost point in the United States is a small island out on Alaska's Aleutian chain called. Semi Sopakonol Island. It is 15 k's west of the 180th meridian, making it the easternmost point of the United States. Hmm. It is covered with volcanoes, and although it has no human residents, up to one million birds call it home from time to time. Looks amazing on Google Earth too. Now, how does someone get there? So, what, what was the story about? So you were, did Haggy talk about a uh, some sort of an incident on a plane? We talked about the history of aviation. I talked about that how the pl- how planes developed, and mm. then they talked about how violence on planes developed. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think um, yeah, those two go hand in hand, and I, yeah, I think John, I reckon that's my best bet is some sort of a plane yeah. or boat, which I think is sort of like the some plane sort of the craft, sea. yeah, air or sea, <laughs> submarine. I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, John. Yeah, that's that's interesting. Yeah, I I believe the northern, western, and southernmost parts of the US are all in Alaska. There's some fact about that. Huh. And southern might be Hawaii, or is Hawaii the westernmost? Anyway, I don't know. Um, there's some fun fact about that. Yeah, I don't know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that uh that brings us to the other thing we like to do. Uh, shout out a few of our great supporters. Uh, Jess, you normally come up with a bit of a a uh, game based on the topic. Yeah, why? How about why they've been asked to get off a plane? <laughs> Fantastic, <laughs> love that. First up, I'd love to thank from Centennial in Colorado in the United States, Cheryl I. Engelsman. Oh, uh, Cheryl was wearing a pants as a top and her shirt as pants. Oh, okay, can't do that. They said no pants and. You're not wearing pants. I am just on my top. <laughs> yeah. Are there are there rules about that on planes? Well, she was in first class. Cheryl sure, was in first class, and <laughs> you do have to dress the part in yeah, first class. Yeah, that's right. You've got to be wearing a, a suit or formal attire in the correct, yeah, uh, correct fashion. God, they are real sky Nazis, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> they should talk about that. Uh, None I'd of that. <laughs> I'd also love to thank from Nottingham in Great Britain, Bethan Brown. Oh, BB. Bethan. Bethan Brown. 
kicked off a plane for uh, starting a food fight. Ooh, yeah. oh, wow. What was to it be fair, nuts? it was a lot of fun, but... <laughs> Someone had a peanut allergy and... Yeah. yeah some got satay got rogue and um, there was an EpiPen on board. It, the, the, that person is fine, but obviously not happy. Mm. You know, you got to all that effort to make sure that your meal caters to your dietary requirements and yeah. then somebody throws satay sauce at you. No good. No good. No good. That's Honestly, a faux pas where a, I come from. That's a Australia. faux pas, Bethan. But people did say it was a bit of fun, but yeah. you were asked to leave the plane. And finally from me, I'd love to thank from Blair Gowry. In Great Britain, I, sh- I reckon that is in Scotland, Liam Burge. Oh, what a Liam name. Burge. I love the name Liam. Liam um, I was going to be Liam, did you know that? If I was a boy? And I was going to be Beth or Bethan. Were you? Bethany, I think. But still. That's nice. Back to back. Huh? What are the odds That's of that? That's crazy. Dave, were you going to be a Cheryl by any chance? I was. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> yeah. Oh and that is my middle name. We did it. David Cheryl. What about Liam was kicked off the plane for... Uh, uh, he dropped his passport down the toilet and they were like, well, when you get to the other side, what are you going to do? Yeah. So they just kicked, kicked him, him off. off. Kicked him off. <laughs> he yeah. wasn't actually in his home country either, so he was stranded regardless. Yeah. And he but said, they Can said, I, not our problem. I'm willing to go get it. Tom Cruise made a film based on it. Tom Hanks. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, Top Gun. <laughs> Tom's, <laughs> Toms are all the same to me. All Toms are the same. That was going to be my name. Okay. If I looked like a Tom. Now I can't figure out what's the truth. Can I thank some people? I'd love it if you did. I would love to thank from deep within the fortress of the moles. <laughs> like lo- Location unknown. Dora Buckle. Oh my God. That is right up there with best names ever. Dora Buckle. <laughs> Dora Buckle. I'm obsessed with that. Oh my God. I love Dora, it so much. already good. Yes. Buckle. Buckle is so Imagine, good. Imagine, I think Buckle is one of those names that goes with nearly any first name. Yep. Matt Buckle. Matt Buckle. Holy love it. shit. Dave Buckle. What about. Wait Buc- for this. Jess Buckle. That's good. What about Bucky Buckle? That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> Knew I'd find one. Bucky Buckle. No, nah, actually, I don't hate it. I, um, I, I, back in my air conditioning days, I uh, hooked up Phil Buckle with a heating system. Did you? And when I was measuring up his basement, I started noticing a lot of ARIA awards and gold records. And it turned out he was in. John Farnham's band. <gasps> I probably told this story before. I don't think so. Or and maybe. It, and um, yeah, he co-wrote like Burn For You and stuff like that. And then, so I had his number and we got on pretty well. He was a lovely guy. And then I was drinking up in a country <laughs> pub and I put <laughs> Burn For You in on the jukebox and I messaged him, you know, like midnight. <laughs> I said, hey, Phil, just put, just put on, oh I'm up at the God. pub and I put on Burn For You. And he replied real quick. He goes, but that was a dance floor clearer. <laughs> <laughs> beautiful song, though. Phil! What a guy. Beautiful That's song. good That's stuff. That's so nice. Phil Buckle. What a beautiful... Fucking legend. What a great name. Dora Buckle's Dora even better Buckle. than Phil Buckle. But Dora Buckle kicked off a plane. What for? Uh, playing Burn For You. Too on loud. Her, on her phone. Yeah. And people couldn't concentrate on their movies because they were too... They were like, oh, what a beautiful love song. Yeah. Uh, all That I Want to Do. Burn, Burn For yeah. You. Burn, Burn For You. <laughs> Oh, burn <laughs> for you. <laughs> what am I going to do? Burn You're really singing with your head. You. <laughs> my, my toad isn't changing, but my hand is doing what Farnsey's yeah. voice would have done. You, so it's a lot of theatre of mind there. Love, Dora Buckle. love you, Farnsey. Fuck, that's such a good name. Um, yeah, Dora Buckle. And you did the right thing in playing Burn For You um, repeatedly on that flight. Next for me, I would love to thank from Preston here in Victoria, Edward Gunning. Oh, that's good too. That's a great name, Gunning. That's fun. Oh, again, just been banger after banger these yeah. days. Yeah, Dave, Edwards, what Edward do? Uh, kicked off the plane for turning the aisle into a giant slip and slide. Oh, so fun! So the, I mean, people applauded as he was taken off. They were, they were like, "You're a legend." Yeah, but they were protesting him being removed because yeah. they were like, Come "We on. were all up for this." And then What's even my crime even bringing the, fun to the flight. It's a hot day, <laughs> in the sky. And it's a long flight. We're all a little bored. It's always hot in the sky, close to the sun. You yeah. got to like get up and stretch your legs so you don't have deep vein thrombosis. Exactly. And he no thought, what? But th- you also feel like a bit of a loser just walking up and down a lot. Um, but if you're slipping and sliding, now you're feeling like a real winner. Even the captain was embarrassed to kick him off. Come on, 
Ah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is your captain. Uh, There's just like one killjoy. Just uh, want you to know uh, that it wasn't my uh, choice to Weak. kick Edward off. Uh, obviously, it's those uh, absolute uh, wet towels at corporate uh, <laughs> have made me <laughs> kick him off. But I uh, salute him and uh, we'll be uh, exiting the plane via the <laughs> the slide myself. I'm Thank you very much. I'm getting my bodies uh, on uh, as we speak. Dave, have you considered a career change? I've thought about it. I, because sometimes it's like, at least that part would come so easily to you. Mm. You know what I mean? You've got a head start. How hard can it be to learn to fly? I mean, the rest of it, basically, the planes fly themselves these days. These but days. the planes don't make their own announcements no. themselves. No, they don't. Not Can't yet. be far away. Yeah, not <laughs> yet. But will they still have that charm, hopefully? I hope so. Thank you, Edward. Uh, finally, for me, I'd love to thank from Greenville, South Carolina. Uh, I think. No, oh, no, you haven't said anything. <laughs> I would love to thank Is their name Greenville, South Carolina? No, I would love to thank Ryan Zika Oh, Ryan Zika I think they were kicked off the plane For ordering a succulent Chinese meal <laughs> What's the crime? <laughs> <laughs> they were confused What's the charge? Ordering a succulent Chinese oh, meal Oh, my penis Ah, uh, yes Congratulations <laughs> to Ryan Ah, uh, yes Oh. D- democracy manifest. <laughs> Do you remember, we went through such a phase of saying that so much. We loved it. When, it was when we were on overseas one time when we just kept saying it. Ah, yes. Ta ta oh. and farewell. <laughs> 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 it was any time any of us suggested anything. You guys ready for breakfast? Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, that was the best bit. <laughs> Underrated part of that whole thing. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> See, you know your judo you well. well. <laughs> this, is the, this is the man that got me on the penis. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, as soon as the the cameras had gone, he just said he'd stop fighting. Like when, once he was in the yeah, car, right. the cop said he he really um backed right off. <laughs> Sorry about that, but I obviously got to perform for the camera. You simply yeah. must. Sorry about that. Understandable. Uh, I am guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, you wanna do you wanna thank a few? From one Ryan to another. This one's from Columbus, Ohio, and it's Ryan McCarthy. Ooh, Ooh. God's country. Ohio. Ohio. Uh, Ryan uh, was kicked off for bringing a live Bengal tiger onto oh, the really? flight. Yeah, he did book a seat for it, yeah. and it sat quite politely. I've got to say, it was a well-trained tiger. That's good. But people were still like, that is actually bigger than you're allowed to have. Yeah. Oh, come on. Would that fit in the overhead compartment? Yeah. It wouldn't. No, right. it wouldn't be comfy anyway. It'd be inhumane to put <laughs> it up there. And when they, they, they approached him, he said, what? What's the problem? What? What? What do you mean? What? I don't know. I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. And I'm with him. That tiger was beautifully behaved. Thanks, Ryan. Good luck with the tiger, mate. I would like to thank now from Horsham here in Victoria, Nicole De Morton. Ooh. Great name. Anything with a de. What about Nicole was uh, kicked off for performing the enti- an entire version of Guys and Dolls solo? Oh, yeah. oh. Playing both the guys and the wow, dolls. Wow, every character. That's a complex role. They, they waited until the end of the standing ovation before she was removed. They gave yeah. her the respect. Yeah, but uh, pretty hypocritical if you ask me. <laughs> I'm not sure because <laughs> I mean, you know, the flight crew are happy to perform yeah. musicals all the time if that's what that is. That is a musical, Dave. <laughs> when they're uh, um, guys and dolls. Is that yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Sorry, I thought you were saying is that what is that what they do when they're showing us how to put on the life vest? Is that a musical? Yeah, that's what I thought <laughs> you meant too. I think of it as that. Yeah, it's art. That's what I think. Yeah, and a one, and a two, and but um, bum bum. Uh, thanks, Nicole. And finally, I'd like to thank from Keensburg in New Jersey. Jersey. In New Jersey, it is Michael Will. Michael Will be kicked off a plane oh. for uh, the things he said. Uh oh. Incredibly inappropriate things he said while having a nightmare. <laughs> he was uh, he was screaming in his sleep. You can't pin that on him. Yeah, but I mean, people were offended. Ah. <laughs> uh. Yeah, interesting. You know what I mean? Like, it was like, we understand you're asleep, but wow, I can't... I don't know how to explain to my kids what uh, <laughs> what you were saying, Michael. Uh, I know it's not you, but, you know, you've you've scared some children. Dare we Just repeat screaming. any of the things? No. no. Oh, no, no. Wow. Michael. <laughs> Michael will be cancelled <laughs> if he keeps falling asleep on planes. <laughs> you got to stay awake on planes, mate. I know a lot of people try and take things to help them go to sleep on a plane, especially long flights. I'm going to need you to do the opposite. (laughs) (laughs) 
Please stay awake. You're going to need to stay awake for the full 24-hour flight to London. Thank you very <laughs> much. All right. Well, that brings us to the last thing we like to do. Welcome some people in the Trip Ditch Club. The way this one works is people who have been supporting us on the Trip Ditch, uh, on the uh, shout-out level or above for three straight years, get welcomed into this club. Bit of theatre of the mind. I'm standing on the door. I've got the clipboard. I've got the list of names, the guest list. I'm going to lift the velvet rope. I'm going to read your name out. Tick you off. In you go. Inside the venue, inside the club. Dave's on the stage. He's your hype man. He's going to... Say he's going to really hype you up as you come in. The whole crowd of, of uh, Trip Ditch Club members is going to applaud and yep. cheer. Oh, we're going to go wild. And Jess will hype Dave up because he's not very good at it and she just feels he needs a little extra <sighs> encouragement. Honestly, fucking sick of him. That's uh, not at all. There was no negativity in the main episode without you. Yeah, <laughs> got to say that. I got a lot of praise from Heggy and Cody Hewitt who <laughs> are not cynical in any way, <laughs> especially Heggy. <laughs> <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Dave, you normally book a band? Yes, I've actually booked uh, Phil Buckle <gasps> to perform <gasps> solo. You got Phil. Oh, Matt, you'll get to see your friend again. Yeah, so good. He's great. And I have uh, obviously uh, confirmed with him that the venue is air-conditioned as his requirements. <laughs> you remember those, I'm sure. Um, so, yeah, Phil Buckle will be performing both solo and John Farnham hits. Wow. Oh, that's great. And I think he was also in the Southern Suns. Will he be playing any of their work? Uh, yes. Oh, my God. A couple of those tracks. It's fantastic. So and Jess, you, you normally have a cocktail. What's your on-flight brawl cocktail? My... <laughs> yeah, what gets people really violent on a plane? Um, I reckon it's got bourbon in it. <laughs> it's uh, Long Island iced teas oh, yeah. and espresso martinis, two things that are guaranteed to fuck you up. Mixed together? Yeah, oh. it's quite bad. Just put it in a um, jug. Actually, Bob, even though there are... <sighs> Here we fucking Even go. though there are multiple uh, alcohols in a Long Island iced tea, it's still the same amount as a normal cocktail because they just put less of each in. You are <laughs> no fun. Well, they're not going to here. <laughs> yeah, there will right. be full shots of These everything. These ones will kill you. And I'm I'm your first mate. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I don't want one. Well, I don't care. I don't want this negative attitude. <laughs> and when we say one, we mean one bottle of each yeah. goes into this liquid. You so. are oh. fucked. Oh no. All right, well, we've got four inductees this week before I drink my final drink. <laughs> uh, firstly, from Dubbo in New South Wales, Australia, it's Catherine Barn. Oh, barnstorming into the venue. Yeah. Barnstorming is a plain thing, so bang, that's pretty bang, good. Bang. From Frederick in Maryland in the United States, it's Victoria Brun. Oh, I'll get Phil to pay... Play Brun for you. I Brun for you. That's that works, what it sounds like. That works like. better written down because it looks like Brun. But anyway. From Paisley in Scotland, it's Craig Mowat. Ooh, Paisley or from Praisley. Yes. And finally from Stanwood in Washington in the United States, it's Bailey. Bailey. will never fail we'll to never make f- this party Crazy! Got you back, brother. Thank you so much, sister. (laughs) Welcome into the club, (laughs) Bailey, Craig, Victoria, and Catherine with a Z. Um, I'm going to start doing that. Just went for the uh, she finger out first, then changed to a fist pump. So then I just had the index finger and I poked her fist. (laughs) I'm going to start doing that from now on. Good to see you. (laughs) Like you, like you're pushing the button for a lift. Thank you. And. Well, that brings us to the end of the episode. Jess, is there anything we need to tell people before we go? That we love them and we support them and that if you want to support us, you can do so at patreon.com or dogoonpod.com. Uh, and dogoonpod.com is also where you can suggest a topic. It's also a link in the show notes and anybody can do that. So if you've got a topic that you think um, would make for a great Do Go On report, send it to us. Hey, how about we also tell them that we've got a couple of live shows left at the uh, comedy Festival and Around. Matt is doing his show Hong Kong Hubba Hubba Ring-A-Ding-Ding with LSA Trombley Virtual. We have got two more live podcasts, Sunday, April 17 and Sunday, April 24 at the European Beer Cafe and one big quiz show left uh, on Monday, April 18. This Monday, if you want to come on down, 9 o'clock, we've got some big, big guests booked in for the final show. Yeah. Very exciting. And I also uh, am coming up to do some stand-up in... Sydney, Canberra, Brisbane and the Gold Coast maybe in the next month or two. Hell yeah. And I think there'll be details for all of that on mattstewartcomedy.com. Hell yeah. Thank you so much for listening. We'll be back next week with another episode. Hit us up at dogoonpod.com. But until then, I'll say thank you so much and goodbye. Later. Bye.